All right, this the rear surface of that uh, rear lens group there looks particularly ugly. It looks like it's got a looks like it's got a fishing net over it, which means that's of a branching pattern of fungus. I'll just have a go at cleaning that. See how it goes. Yeah, we're just reduced to smears now, so that's a big improvement. Let's see if it will polish clean. Well, still a few smears on there, but that's a big improvement means that that's probably going to be fine. I've got the window light coming in from my right here and I can judge by the reflections how clean that glass is or not. It's not wonderful, but it, it'll do. It'll do. Okay, so let's start taking this apart. Off with the retaining ring that I'd pop back on there. The shims. There's a paper shim there and a metal shim. These are very oily. There's another paper shim here. Glued to the back of the shutter with oil. Let's see if I can get that loose. Yeah, it'll come loose. It's worth taking care not to tear these because they're a bugger to put back if you tear them. Okay, the real end grip should unscrew with my fingers. It doesn't. Okay. Okay, I have to find a tool. Some someone has been very enthusiastic about doing things up. First call, a friction tool. That won't shift it. This is very, very tight. Let's try this then. Okay, that's it. Now, looking at the notches here, someone's had a tool in there to tighten that lens up. It only ever needed to be done up finger tight. Front lens group. Not quite as dirty as the rear lens group. I think it lacks the uh, the benefit of that fungus growth. Oh, something interesting here. The outer case here is chewed up at this point. It means that the shutter at some stage was allowed to rotate in the camera body and the curved the little gear here has bitten into the case. It's interesting. I don't think that will cause any great issues for servicing the camera. Right, there's a single screw here that locks the retaining ring at the front. Let's 
little small black screw very very easily lost do your best not to lose that one because nobody has any spares I'm using a toothpick here to unscrew this retaining ring so that I don't leave scratches all over it like the last person who didn't use a toothpick, they used the end of a screwdriver Remove the front rings here so there's the lens mount this is the piece with the aperture numbers on it it telegraphs the numbers to the top of the shutter where you can see them this is the coupling from the shutter to the uh, from the settings ring through to the aperture setting and a shutter speed settings ring at the front here okay. the shutter speed settings cam plate and we're into the shutter itself that spring's sitting funny just looking at the position of the spring on this lever it wasn't hooked round correctly it's a wonder it hadn't fallen off that's the lever that stops you being able to depress the shutter release if the shutter isn't actually cocked we have the curved get this piece out and the little pinion the main spring for the shutter is here doesn't look like it's in awful condition either so that's a bonus yeah that's in quite good condition here's the main cam now interestingly this, this, there's not, a, not much sign of lubrication in here which means whoever serviced the, the shutter was exceedingly sparing in applying lubrication and that can be all right shutters do need some lubrication all right two screws hold the retard gear train in this one and this one the screws are a little bit damaged looking nothing dramatic Let's see if this runs down. It does, but it's a bit hesitant. It probably would have been fine with the spring that was in the shutter because that was a very good spring. The self timer. Let's see if that runs down. Yeah, that seems all right. Again, it's not wonderful, but by the same token, it did work and it ran pretty much without any hesitation. This stuff I want off. This is the catch that holds the main cam in the cocked position when the shutter gets cocked. And under here we have the flash sinker flash sink gear which gives you a choice of flash sink for electronic flash which basically means instant so it means that the flash contacts make at the point where the shutter blades are fully open and the alternative is M sink which is for flash bulbs and in that case the flash bot the flash contacts make before the shutter actually runs runs so 
in the first instant when the shutter starts to move it fires the flash bulb the pallets here run down the set delay and then the action completes to actually fire the shutter it's a very short delay but it's real right there's a tiny spring here which I've got to get off so I'm putting some a stick over the center there so I don't lose it and I can lift that spring out very easily lost carefully put that down there that wheel can come off the B lever is here now the return sp the spring the screw that holds the B lever down has a spring on it the spring is not for the B lever itself it's for the settings lever here it's a little bit bent that spring here's the B lever that's come off and the B lever's return spring is this one now this is must be a fairly early three big C because the later ones had a one piece spring that did the B lever and the settings lever all in one. Okay, well that's all that needs to come off from the front. I'll take the outer case off the shutter and the flash contact, there's a little clamping screw here which just makes sure that the connection is clamped firmly there are three screws hold the outer case in place two little countersunk head or flathead screws and they are different diameters see when you're reassembling things don't mix them up the smaller diameter one goes here And this screw which locates the shutter in the camera it actually locks into this spot here and stops the shutter from being able to rotate on the camera so that when you're pushing against it by cocking the shutter it doesn't just turn back in the other direction all right that's so far so good this lever here which doesn't move at the moment that's the aperture setting lever now that's jammed that's jammed solid so that means that there's a serious problem there most likely the shutter blades are just simply gummed up the diaphragm blades are, rather are just simply gummed up with oil they don't look like it they're in the closed position and they're not moving well, we'll take that setting lever off and we'll discover the cause for our distress shortly I'd say it may be that the setting lever is corroded to the back of the shutter that can certainly happen I don't remember seeing it happen in recent times it certainly looks like it's distorted it's our setting lever it's not corroded here's the shim that goes under it and the setting lever for our flash sink our self timer in the diaphragm will it move yeah the blades move so there's something odd going on there that was displaced in some fashion there's an odd mark at that point I don't know what caused that now the diaphragm does move there's no problem there the shutter interestingly that shutter you can see it in the camera you see that fuzzy patch that's a fingerprint someone has put their fingerprint on the back of that presumably after they'd serviced the shutter and before they put the rear group back in place
Now those shutter blades may well need to be polished in order to get a pretty looking shutter out of that. This is the case. The case has our diaphragm blades in it. Now this has got an odd look to it. There's a, a grey sort of a look to this. Um, an unusual pattern in the metal and there's certainly brown patches here which I would normally take to mean rust I wonder whether this shutter was flood cleaned it doesn't look like it particularly on those diaphragm blades but that's the sort of effect I would expect It's not usual for that to be as dull and finished or to have those funny marks on it. So this camera may have some significant history. Took that lot out. What have we got? Okay. Well look at that. That is that's weird. Both sides. The retaining plate, the same. Very heavily embossed fingerprints in there. They're just etched in. Fingerprints look like that are etched in. It means that someone has handled it and their skin oils or perspiration or whatever have left a permanent record of their fingerprints etched into the metal. In the case itself, well, there's, there's nothing particularly remarkable about this except there is a pattern around here. Um, reminiscent of water or some liquid having been there and left a, a pattern. The mechanism plate. The blades tip off, means they're not glued together with oil. That's good. And the mechanism plate itself looks remarkably clean. Now given the contrast between this and this, it's, it's really odd. It's like someone serviced the front half of the shutter and did nothing with the rear half of the shutter. Your three screws hold the lens tube here in place on the mechanism plate. One of the screws is longer than its mates because it has to pass through this plate. The other two are just that much shorter, and we're probably talking a quarter of a millimetre. In fact, the blade actuating ring off there. And that's our shutter in little pieces. I can start the process of cleaning and reassembly. I'll start cleaning up these cam these shutter parts and I'll start with the case. Now that's coming off pretty clean. That tells me that there's not a lot of oil on that case. Got to clean the inside of these, this case. Get that. That's always where I've. It's usually my my start point for these shutters is to start with the case and start with the diaphragm, and then move to the me mechanism plate after that. Though sometimes I swap it about just for a change. That looks pretty good. Now there were some obvious marks in there earlier. I'm not seeing them now whether that means that they were just superficial marks. I don't know. To put that to one side, these pieces concern me more because they are unusually stained.
Well, the black finish is basically gone in a lot of this. It's down to the underlying brass. It's where those fingerprints have etched through. They've etched into it, so that's the cause of that, I think. This side, this side of the plate, this is the side that faces the shutter blades. And then normally this has quite a shine to it. And this is very unusual to see it with that dull finish. I honestly don't know what to make of that, apart from it does look like there's been corrosion there. It looks like moisture has sat there and the blades have sat in one position and the corrosion is set up underneath them. Now whether that could be a, sh a very short term issue or I'm trying to find, you know, think of a reason for it to look like this. I think that the diaphragm was flood cleaned. I think someone cleaned the diaphragm in place in the case. I think that most likely they had the mechanism plate out because that showed no signs of that sort of behaviour. But they started with the case with the diaphragm in it and they attempted to flood clean it, clean it in place. And whether they repented and then took it apart and cleaned the blades and put them back, I don't know. My experience is that where shutters have been flood cleaned, particularly diaphragms, that it is obvious looking at the blades that that's the case. And you can certainly see patterns on these blades which would match the sort of thing I'm seeing here. But the, looking into the shutter from the back, looking at the blades, they appeared quite good. So yeah, it's a bit of a bit of a puzzle. Anyway, I think that's what's happened. I think that the diaphragm had been flood cleaned, and the rest of the shutter had been cleaned conventionally, which is, uh, you know, a pretty unusual thing. To, for someone to do, it certainly suggests that whoever serviced the camera was fairly unfamiliar with the Compor shutters because to be quite honest it's not a big deal to take apart the diaphragm on one of these shutters and clean it correctly. Right, I'll put the blades apart for the moment. These pieces I'm going to clean with some metal polish they shouldn't have a finish that looks like that. They, 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 should be, they should be smooth. And to be quite honest, this piece should be shiny. Let's start with some metal polish here. This will, of course, remove even more of the original black finish. I'm more concerned about the the smoothness of the finish. I don't know what it it's difficult to know what someone used there. I know that there's an enthusiasm for isopropyl alcohol in some quarters, and I'm not convinced that that's a wonderful strategy because uh, alcohols are good at absorbing moisture and when they evaporate they leave that moisture behind. Alright, put that to one side. Have a look at this plate. One of the effects you get when shutters are flood cleaned 
it's really odd the way that's, um, that looks is that when they've been flood cleaned you can clean oil and contaminants from one place but what you're doing is just diluting them and spreading them over all the surfaces so you can easily move a nuisance problem from one place and end up depositing it, depositing it all over something else Okay, well, I'll just clean those two components now with some naphtha and see what they look like. I can't say that I'm very impressed with the result they don't really, this is not really looking much better than it did before except that it's nice and smooth Yeah, this, this shadow here, that, it, that tells me that was definitely the result of flood cleaning. Basically that's where this was not in contact with another metal surface, that little, that long piece there, that long mark, that was not in contact with another metal surface and so it didn't corrode in the same fashion. So whatever had been used to clean this had promoted some corrosion because we have got dissimilar metals here I mean this is the shutter case is aluminium and this piece, piece is brass 